My name is Daryl Bell. Um, some of you know me as Stephen the Levite, and this is a true story. California, born in San Diego, raised in Temecula, um, lived there until about the age of 20, a month before 21, and moved out here with my boy Muse One from Redeemed Thought, and came out here together in 2002, and I've been here ever since. I've been trying to cultivate a, um, I guess a, a market or, you know, just a following for our music, you know, but since then, you know, met wives and uh, you know, now I'm here serving at Epiphany Fellowship and married and got a son and a daughter on the way and that's kind of how it's, it's looking so far. <laughs> um, I work for uh, my boss, Gray. He, uh, he's a member here at Epiphany as well and um, he owns a cleaning company. We clean, uh, you know, commercial buildings, uh, you know, plants and places where they, you know, make boxes or, you know, shower heads and stuff like that, and um, clean bathrooms, take out trash, mop and, uh, you know, wax and strip floors and stuff like that, and, um, but yeah, I mean, it's nothing, nothing crazy, but, you know, definitely not, not easy either, so. <laughs> so my second job, which um, holds a little bit more of my heart, is, uh, you know, being a, a recording artist for Land Mode. Um, you know, I'm a rapper. <laughs> well, you know, I, I started rolling with Lambo in 2006 or 2005 um, for my album. Well, no, it was 2006, the year I put out to die his game, first project with them, and uh, been rolling with him ever since. Um, you know, so I've I took a break off after um, after to die his game, uh, just to focus on Epiphany, focus on uh, my. Um, my wife, who was, you know, I had just met at the time, and um, just to get focused on what was priority for me. I think as an artist, I had kind of stepped on the importance of the local church, and, uh, you know, just wanted to focus in on that and um, make sure that I had that down before I stepped out of that and try to do something as, you know, something that can mess you up as much as having a public platform. So having having the stuff that's going to keep me rooted um, solid before I try to do, do uh, public ministry again. One of the things that's kind of taboo and isn't really talked about much in hip-hop is the, um, the importance of family and the importance of being grounded in a local church um, and, you know, really just having those things in order. Um, I think personally one of the, one of the um, philosophies that I've taken on, like, you, you you read through the scriptures and you see stuff about the deacons and stuff and pastors, they say, you know, make sure he has his house in order or else he can't serve in the house of God. And um, what, I, what I think you can apply also to this is like, you know, making sure that even that you have the church in place before you're stepping outside of that as well. I think that in the same way that having your personal life in order with God is important before you get married and start a family same way that having your family in order before you step out and try to have a, a an exemplary type of ministry in a local church, I think it's just as important to have that kind of accountability structure in place and, um, you know, just the same way that your wife testifies that, oh yeah, he's killing it at home, he's, he's, he's good to serve here, like the church should be able to say, oh, he's killing it here, he's good to serve out there. I think it adds more credibility to what I'm doing on the mic as well because I'm not just, um, you know, I'm not just a rapper and I'm not just talking about, yeah, you know, I hit the streets and I do this and I do that, um, but, you know, there's, you know, there's a witness to what I have been doing and, um, you know, it, I think it kind of backs up what I say on the mic, so. I think about, I think about Steven a lot, like, Steven was one of my models for ministry, like, he was a deacon. At the time, that wasn't even a title. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it just meant we need you to serve tables. Um, but he was well-rounded. He wasn't just the dude who served tables and didn't know anything. But he knew enough doctrine to defend his faith against cats who had opposition. 
and he was strong enough in his faith to, to hold to that until the end. And, um, you know, I try to, I've always looked up to him and said, Dad, I want to be that well rounded. I want to be able to serve when, I, when it's necessary. I want to be able to defend the faith and not just be um, some mindless dude who does stuff, but also be knowledgeable enough about the faith to be able to defend it. And, um, you know, and also to be gifted. It said that he had, you know, he did signs and wonders and stuff like that. And, you know, people can resist his wisdom. So he was, he was well-rounded. He wasn't just like, oh, I just do this, I don't know anything. Or I know a lot, but I don't do nothing. Or I got these gifts and that's what makes me who I am. But he had all of it and, um, um, and, and used them all at, at the capacity that the Lord had gifted him to do so. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do.